Hello everybody. <laughs> it's a little bit chilly here. It's great, you know. This morning it was like 15 Celsius. So it's quite chilly. I can enjoy my showers and uh, now it's a nice, nice weather. We were supposed to have rain and nothing. There are, I think there are big clouds. Maybe later we're gonna have some rain. I have not seen baby Oscar today. He must be very busy. No, there is hmm, nothing. Oh, it's cool. So I'm gonna do a small live about something that um, some of you I'm asking about, you know, and uh, let me let me close this and be on the stand just one minute. It's a little bit the mess here. <laughs> so let me sit there. Let me turn this. How do I turn this? Uh, huh. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe here. Yes. So let me put this on the stand. Yeah. Um, we have an amazing weather in the high desert. It's uh, really surprising because when I moved one year ago, it was so hot at that the same time. And now it's it's really uh, amazing. It's even a little bit chilly. So I am really enjoying my uh, my shells. <laughs> it's uh, voila. So uh, I do this video on English. Uh, I will do it in French another time. It's complicated for me. I would love it. I, I think there is a direct translator, but it's you on your side who has to set up that. Me, I cannot, uh, I cannot do it. And I'm really bad to subtitle because it takes a long time. I, I'm really bad with that. I'm not really good with technology. I just do what I know to do with, you know, my phone and my video and my pictures and, and that's it. And uh, the rest is complicated to me. So, yeah, it's a topic that uh, a lot of people uh, um, telling me about it's about what is going on right now and we are exactly in the, in the in the thing now with the pride month so it's about this phenomenon of transgenderism and me I have a view about that uh, I try always to go beyond the first degree and to see um, as I know uh, I observed, I think the fact that when I was little girl, I was mostly alone. I always observed a lot. So when you, you observe and you are in silence and observe, you get things that you don't get when you are disturbed by so many things. So I always had this kind of vision of the world uh, that at my way, that when I was speaking to people around me about, they say, oh, you are not in reality. But what I was seeing maybe was too visionary or I was seeing things and, and I felt always rejected. I felt always uh, not at the right place, not because it was really weird for me to see things, to try to express what I was seeing and to, to don't, People don't receive it in front of me and telling me sometimes I was crazy. So I think photography has been for a big part in that because I was frustrated about this to don't be, I would say, comprehend, comprehended, com don't be understood, to don't be, uh, to don't have someone say, oh yeah, you're right, I see this like that as well. So maybe photography has been the way for me to capture things that I loved very strongly and, and to show it to the world, but very young. But I realized also that when I was taking a picture, what I was seeing after was not like was an, when I was in the place. It was not, I, don't, I didn't have the same feeling than when I was in the place. So I thought something is missing. It's flat. And I realized later on, much later, that when I was 
putting myself in the landscape, the landscape was taking a bigger dimension, a more, it was a, a better perspective, a proportion about a human, a human being, a body in the landscape. So it's like that in a way that I started to do more and more self-portrait when I was traveling because I wanted to show the scale when I do it seems maybe crazy because I do this self-portrait now for my shawls, but when I do self-portrait, in fact, it's not about me. Even if I put me in the center of the picture is to give the perspective of the landscape. Like the person is for that. I love to have pictures when I am from the back uh, because it's like the viewer can be at my place and see through, if it's like, Seeing at me in the picture from the back, it's like the viewer is seeing the landscape and can see it uh, like I see. <laughs> it can seem crazy. I don't know if you understand very well what I mean by that, but this is my way to, you know, to try to give a glimpse of the perception I have of things surrounding me. So now to go back with what is going on since I can say one year now, because since the sanitary crisis, so many things did happen. I spoke a lot about all this in my video. I've been at the beginning because I was speaking at the beginning of my vision and of my of my perception of this situation. And uh, I've been treated of, you know, uh, conspirationist and all that. But I don't care because I'm used to. I'm used to since more than 40 years because I was seeing things that I was perceiving and people say, you are crazy. No, it's not like that. No, the government is not like that. No, this political thing is not that. I say, okay, but me, I see things differently. So uh, a lot of things did happen in one year because I moved here one year ago. So I was busy with my moving. Uh, this happened, I, I learned that I had to move at Easter day last year. And finally, all the adventure that you follow, you know how I end up here and all this. And you saw my installation and how it was like very busy. I was very, very busy with all that. And, uh, and after I had this trip beginning of the year at spring, so I was not very available. I needed time for myself. And it was a lot of things moving. You know, when you do a moving, you move things outside of you, but it's moving things inside of you because the uh, outside world is also connected to your inner world. So it's very uh, challenging and it can be very disturbing when you do a moving because you move things and these things got somewhere an imprint of you, your emotions, your life, your things. So you are moving all that. So it can be disturbing even sometimes. Me, I know the process, so I'm not disturbed by that. But I feel that the energy is changing, changing direction. Can you imagine I am in a humid place, like in face of the ocean, and suddenly I move here where it's dry. So imagine for the body, it's even really uh, disorienting, you know? And this is at one level, but at other deeper levels, this is moving as well. And it's a time, it's a big time at the level of the planet and also at the cosmos that things are moving very fast. Uh, for the one who are interested in astrology and in astronomy, you must know that uh, the planet is raising frequency, it's going faster. And we felt, I felt this many, many years ago. I say it's real, the time seems short, the day seems short, but in reality, there is something like that. And, uh, and everything goes faster because somewhere, uh, to schematize all this, uh, my perception of what is going on, and I spoke about this in some video these last three years, but even now with these movements that are all around the world of, you know, the transgender movement and all these things and the pronouns and all this, for me, to make it short, it's like humanity arrived to the civilized humanity in the civilized, in the Western world, arrived to the point that they are so spoiled and by that so cut from their essence 
that there is like a need for the higher self at the collective level to to found their identity. It's like a big crisis, a big spiritual crisis of uh, growth of consciousness, of realization. And it's like for that, like sometimes individually, we have to put ourselves in situation sometimes absurd to have the idea to realize that it's absurd and to, to have the idea to go back to something that bring more peace and more simple things. So for me, I see this as humanity that is evolving. We are always mutating as humans since ever. And we are like with the fact that the planet is also uh, changing frequency faster and higher, we are part of that planet. We are organic as this planet, as nature on the planet. And we have to follow that. And we have to follow that ascension and it's very hard. It's very hard for the bodies, but it can be also disturbing because a lot of people uh, question themselves because I, I think simply they have been cut to of, of their um, divine dimension. And I'm not speaking about religion, Catholic, of all this, not at all. I'm speaking about the divine dimension that is for me being connected to nature. And it has been such a big thing about consumerism, industrialization and technology that is great also because I can speak with, to you, but about all this too much, too much taken in that um, parasite by this, that now it's like, a a civilization that is at loss. They really don't know who they are. And they try to, for me, I see even beyond that, it's like I spoke about that with the selfie uh, phenomenon some years ago, where I said that at first sight, at the first degree, it seems like to be really on an ego maniac thing. But me, I see something beyond. I see, I was seeing that through this image of the face nonstop, all you have pages, I can't, you have all image of faces, the same faces, different angles, same close up, same crop. It's like, for me, it's like the being is trying to manifest in the physical material dimension that we are, the beauty of the divine, of the subtle realm, that is very difficult to, to bring here to, because if you are not artist and don't have uh, this connection by sensitivity with the subtle world, invisible world, it's very difficult uh, to, to know because you, don't, you are not connected. But, but you are, everybody is connected because we are all here. So, but it's a different way to be connected. And that for me, it's a research. We are all creators. And for me, when doing that with ourselves, it's a research to bring in the physical realm, something of the beauty of the divine from that invisible realm. And it's what is going on at another level now. After the selfie some years ago, now we have the transgender movement. Because at the divine level, it's like we are timeless, we are limitless, and there is no notion of him, her, she, he. There is, but in the physical realm, you have XX and XY. That's it. So, but this is the physical dimension. So, I have the feeling that a lot of humans in this big crisis that we are living all around the world, it's a, it's a spiritual growth crisis. There is in fact a, a quest for the divine identity and to manifest the divine in the physical world is what I, I perceive it like that. I, I see this very positive, even if I have the feeling it go, it has to go to some really deep nonsense 
to be able to find a balance. And uh, because it's more simple than that, this is bringing too much confusion and too much complication. It's more simple like that. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's blowing my mind actually, but I, I don't want to say to stay at the surface of that. I see something beyond that is really strong and really, really important because as we are entering in the Aquarian era, now we have to be the, the human race has to really connect to spirit and to spirit, you know, it's a breath. It's, it's what keeps us alive. And this, we have no control on that. We cannot decide, you know, and I had a very beautiful experience like day, last day. I opened my window in the morning and when I wake up, I went out. The light was amazing. And suddenly that landscape that I know now since one year, it's like the landscape aspired me, was breathing me. And in the same time, simultaneously, it was like, I was breathing the landscape inside of me and we were one. And it was such a moment of epiphany that it was, I was crying. It was very, very strong and beautiful. I was feeling breathed and breathing that. And I was feeling breathed by that. And, and it, this is very simple. And I think this connection that I have when I picture, you know, nature, when I picture the flowers, I, be I have the feeling at the moment I become this flower or butterfly or my little bird. It's like I can understand, I can feel what is feeling, what is last day was like taking all this piece of treat I gave and he keep them in a beak and he was like looking for his friend, but I think it's not his friend. I think it's his parent. So it's his like his kid or maybe it was Oscar because I realized on pictures that I was just checking on my phone that Oscar, the parent of this baby Oscarine, had a white tip of, an, of a feather. And yesterday or before yesterday, baby Oscarine came and he was like looking for another one. And the other one who came I think it was Oscar because I recognize the feather and I recognize that it's validated that when I recognize the feather today on my take of last year when I was with Oscar and Oscar is bigger than baby Oscar in. So maybe they share even in between parents and kids and vice versa, not only one way. So it's that, you know, nature, it's like that. We are that, we are that, we, we we are alive and we are connected because we breathe, because we have this breath. So this spiritual crisis manifest by all this uh, situation that we are living, especially in the West, because in the country that are more or less developed, there are no this problem. They are not at all. And they are not. And also, for example, uh, I went in French Polynesia, there is no problem about gay people or that. It's common and it's like normal in every family that it's, it's, it's totally, total nonsense. Why make a big deal about that? Oh, my baby's here. Oh, look, he was here. Hey, baby. Oh, he's coming. Look at this. Oh, my baby. You are here? <laughs> He's so cute. When I'm speaking, he here and he loves that because he wonders who is there. He's curious. Huh? He's listening. He's so cute. Yeah, so you know it's that. And when I go and when I see even beyond that, because I, since all these many, many years, I've been passionate about the symbolism and about the esoteric side of things and about... Uh, having a bigger picture of what is given, giving us to see, because what we see is a pale manifestation of what we don't see of the invisible. And um, for me, when I see all the events that are going around the world and all the confusion and all the kind of fight in between, it's like the manifestation on the planet of two 
big forces. There are these forces that we call Eros and Thanatos uh, of uh, desire and life and of destruction. And these forces are working together to make the world as it is, to make the universe as it is. But I have the feeling since some months that by the fact that we are in this, in this dynamic in the world, these forces, if we, if we realize who we are, as human being, as divine being, we're going to reverse and we're going to change the way grace of us, grace our realization, grace our opening, open consciousness about that, we're going to, in a way, influence. It can seem really uh, pretentious, but it's like we're going to influence the way by which these forces are playing together. And this depends about our way, our mindset, our way to see that and for, to see what is going on. And to see what is going on is not, and my, my thing is not to deny what is going on, to don't want to see, it's just really the contrary, is to step back, to observe, to connect. And I, this is a good thing of aging. I'm old enough to be able to remember a lot of situation, political things in some country and things, and to connect the dots. So when you, you, you can observe like that, you can see that there is a kind of direction that all this is taking and that all this, in a way, it's necessary for the evolution of the human race. And we are on an edge. We are just on an edge. Are we going to shift on that way or that way? And this is going to be upon our consciousness, upon our way to think, because everything created has been fought. Everything we created, like in the technology and all, we thought about that. We create that at our unconscious level. We manifest that because it's the exact tool that we need for the evolution of human being as well and of life on Earth. So it's like very, very interesting phenomenon. And it's very even difficult to put precise word on that, on what I perceive about that, because it's very simple in a way. But when you see all the path that all this has to take to arrive to something simple. Because I notice in my life, I was speaking with one of my, my friend followers recently, who was younger than me, who could be like my kids. When I was this age, like around 45, is when I stopped to be as I was in my research, spiritual research. Everybody is spiritual. Everybody is connected to spirit because if not, we will not be here. Everybody on earth is breathing. So we are connected to spirit and we are spiritual. The difference is that we realize that we are more than a physical body or not. We realize that we have an invisible dimension that is huge or not. And when you know that you, you, you are in touch with this invisible dimension, with your higher self, with call it like you want, there is something magical that is happening because you get informed, you get the messages by this dimension because you are open to that. You don't reject it. You don't uh, deny that this exists. So as you do that, this, there is a relation. You, you, there is a connection with that and it's coming, it's flowing. You get inspired. You follow the flow, you are not scared because you know that you are a wholeness and you decide to come at that time in history on the planet to live this experience that you are living and you just go with the flow. You take care of yourself as much as you can. You observe, you, you step back and think about the decision you want to take and things fl are flowing because this is really a time to really be clear with ourselves. It's really a time where 
everything that doesn't serve you has to go away because you need you need really to be um, without interferences with the frequency that is raising and that you are part of because you raise as well as frequency and sometimes it's painful in the body like I was saying in my uh, last live and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you um, send me so many very kind messages and I, I want to thank you about that because it's it has been really moving to me and uh, and and this shows me that it's important for us to witness about our life experiences because it can give other options to others it can because we are all in the field we are all connected and uh, if i feel to speak about something my way someone gonna get that and maybe have a little thing more to understand better their way. And, and it's the beauty of the technology we created. And as I said before, we created that because at unconscious level, we, were, we created a tool that we need to be in touch all together, even if it seems virtual. We can share things that we could not before. And, and this is really, uh, it's really, really, uh, amazing the era that we are living. So it's all about sharing. This is the Aquarian era and the collective. And we created the perfect tools for that. And now we go in a kind of uh, extreme thing where we're going to, humanity is facing a wall. Uh, there is things that are totally without sense. And now all this is a condition for a big awakening, for saying, oh, oh where, where are we going now? <laughs> this is like there is something, it's more simple than that. Why are we going in this way? And uh, it's, it's really, it's fascinating to me. Yeah. So I wanted to share this with you and to be to tell you to really take care of yourself. Listen to your heart. Listen to what you feel that is right for you and only you. And also the beauty of this is that instead of wanting to be all the same uh, copy and like clones and like robots, it's impossible. As humans, we all have a uniqueness. We are all unique. And this uniqueness is exactly what is needed for the collective. Like I said before, the details. Oh, my baby is waiting. Oh, so cute. But look at that. Baby. Oh, you are waiting, my baby. Huh? Oh, he's adorable. And, um, and this is baby Oscarine. It's not Oscar. And, you know, this uniqueness that each of us have or are, it's exactly what is needed because the way I see, the way you see, if we exchange this, instead of rejecting the way I see and the way you see, we can just observe and keep that and see the way that someone else see and keep that and keep that and keep that. And like this, we have a bigger picture of what is going on because we are all coming from this divine realm all coming from this invisible and we have all this invisible dimension that is connected in the field all around that we cannot see and this is the beauty of that my difference your difference are complementary they are not antagonist and when we will more and more realize that less and less these antagonist forces that are acting through us will play the same way and they will start to relate in a different way. So nobody is insignificant. Nobody, oh, I'm a nobody. No, everybody who came in this time has to realize the preciousness of who they are and how they are different. It's exactly what it's needed in this time to make something, to create a new way to be related and to it's beautiful it's really it's it's really beautiful oh my baby 
So I'm gonna let you because I'm gonna feed him a little bit. I'm gonna see to show him to you a little bit closer. But this is what I wanted to share with you. And it's, I will have more about this, but look at this little thing. Hey, baby. Come on, baby. You come, you come, come, come. Uh, are you coming? You want your treat, baby? Oh, oh, oh. he doesn't like the phone. This I notice when I show him the phone, he's not really happy. And also when I wear glasses, it's like making reflection and it's disturbing him. Ah, hey, baby? Oh, you come. Oh, yes. <laughs> you want something? Huh? Oh, you sing? You sing for us? Do you sing for us? Huh? <laughs> and the wind, it's like in his favors it's like sure there are the drapes of the, the linen but it's also the wind in his favor is very disturbed when there is a wind because when it was not the drapes when i came back it was very windy and uh, he was disturbed look he's here now what you want my baby do you sing for us huh? do you sing for us do you do like this huh? yeah like that Oh, you are so beautiful. You are beautiful, my baby. Huh? Oh. <laughs> oh, precious. You are precious. Yes. Huh? <laughs> you know, I never get tired of being with him. It's such an amazing relation. Ah, uh, okay, so I let you... <laughs> you gonna come. I let you and I wish you a very good day, a very good evening. And uh, I answer to all the message, so you, you can message me if you like. Um, it was difficult for me. Yes, baby, I'm coming. It's difficult for me to uh, to really take because it's very it's already difficult for me to follow the thread of what I feel. Uh, and I cannot interrupt to read all the comments and to welcome you. Uh, but I'm open to do some live with some of you if you want to, to speak about a topic in particular. I will be happy about that. Uh, next Friday, I'm going to have a live with someone who is doing something amazing for children. And uh, that goes with the current of what is going on, but on, on a deeper way. So we're going to have a, a live about uh, the organization she created and what she's uh, proposing for schools and, and different, uh, you know, um, associations. So voila. So I wish you a good night. And uh, I'm going to feed this little one. Hey, baby. <laughs> Bye.